Are you new to running? If so, then I hope you're enjoying the freedom and simplicity of just heading out the door and getting your dose of exercise. Now, don't worry, we're not getting technical today, but if you are just starting out or you're coming back after some time off from running, you could be making a few small mistakes. So I'm gonna be covering the common ones and the great news is they're all super easy to correct. guilty of having slightly lazy feet. You hear them scuffing through the ground. Well, it is easy to think that maybe that's a more efficient way to run because you're not wasting energy lifting your legs up really high, but it could actually be limiting your running ability and also obviously the risk of tripping over roots and wearing out your shoes. So other than just saying, well, pick your feet up more, there's a few things you can do to help. So start off with a bit of a jog warm up as you would normally, and then put in some blocks of high knees. So 10 to 20 seconds of either on the spot or going forwards gently of really high knees and then have a nice sort of recovery of 30 seconds or so. Do that again and repeat it a few times. So when you come back to normal running, it should feel really easy to lift your feet up just a little bit higher. Also steps and hills are a great way because you basically have to pick your knees up high. And again, when you come back to running on the flat, it should feel super easy. It's super tempting to head out too fast. You might have really fresh legs, be excited just to go out for your run and leave the house. And maybe it's a little bit cold when you step outside too. All of that combined can end up in you running too fast too soon. And you really need your body to have time to adapt. So if anything, you want to actually be building throughout your run. So it's better to start off slower and get faster. You'll enjoy it a lot more. And there's nothing wrong with even heading out the door, just walking for the first few minutes until your body gets going and then you can find your rhythm. And remember, if a pace feels really easy at the start, it's probably going to feel a little bit harder by the time you get to the finish, so think about the whole length of your run when you're starting off. This one does take a little bit of planning. Getting your eating and drinking correct around your running is vital. Too much, too soon, and then you're likely to feel sick or get a stitch. If, however, you've not hydrated or eaten enough, you could feel really dehydrated or maybe even a little bit weak and not able to complete your session. It isn't complicated, it does just require a little bit of pre-thought. And I'm afraid I can't give you any exact numbers of when to eat and what to eat because all of us have very different digestive systems and we can be more used to going running after a meal than others. But if I had to give a really ballpark figure, I'd say from a normal meal, two to three hours until you could run at the earliest. And if if you've just had a snack then maybe 30 to 60 minutes depending obviously on what it was and let's say you want to head out for a run but you're really hungry then a good snack could be something like a cracker maybe a banana or some toast with nut butter anything that's fairly dry and simple that your body can digest and then there's the whole side of hydration there is no point in suddenly realizing that you're really thirsty before your run downing a pint of water and it's just going to be there glogging around in your stomach and probably give you a stitch and it won't have absorbed and be helping you in any way so it's very key to make sure you stay hydrated throughout the day and if you're doing a short run you shouldn't need any hydration but as soon as you get home do make sure you rehydrate to replenish anything you might have sweated out. On the same topic, carrying water is another subject that divides a lot of runners. And just from observation, I tend to see more beginner runners actually heading out and carrying water with them than I do experienced runners. But why is this? I mean, neither is gonna need hydration more than the other in any particular reason. And I know we get hydration drummed into us daily of how much we should drink, like X amount per day. But like I've already said beforehand, you need to make sure you're hydrated before you go for your run. And you shouldn't need to be topping it up if you're just doing a 30 to 40 minute easy jog. Obviously it's going to be very different if you're running in extremely hot conditions or if you're going for a long run then that's another matter. But for now when you are starting out leave the bottle at home so you can concentrate on keeping yourself nice and balanced and relaxed and not having to have one thing in your hand. It's one less thing to worry about. We run with our legs right? Yes of course but our arms still play a large part in assisting. Take walking for example. When we walk 
we naturally swing our arms. If you walk faster, then you'll find the arm swing moves faster, but also a little bit further. But when it comes to running, why do we sometimes feel a little self-conscious of our arms? Like, what should they be doing? How do they move? Why is that something that we haven't sort of managed to find naturally? Well, your arms need to stay relaxed while still assisting your running. And then that could sound like a slight contradiction because obviously if they're relaxed, are they doing anything? But yes, you can rely on momentum to help with that forwards and backwards movement, which will in turn help with the drive through as you lift your legs up. And if we start off by looking at the hands. Now, if they're relaxed, it's gonna help through the chain. So you want to imagine if you just held your hands out in front of you now, they're kind of just gonna be relaxed in a finger. Your fingers are gonna be slightly bent like that. You don't want to have them dead straight like a sprinter you also don't want to have a clenched fist because that could really build up tension. Some people even find carrying something say really soft and light that just helps you have that gentle grip on your hands when you're running. And then you move up to the arms or the elbows I should say in the forearms and you want to have a nice natural bend in your arms so that your hands are going past your waist and your hips on every run stride. Hopefully in a forwards and backwards motion any movement across the body is going to actually deter from propelling you forwards. If you've got all of that right Hopefully it will ensure that your shoulders are already nice and relaxed as well as your neck. And that will then allow for you to get maximum oxygen into your lungs and really focus on your running. Running is such a wonderful sport and the fact that pretty much all of us can just head out of the door and go and do it with very little equipment required. There is one piece though I would say is totally worth investing in and that is your footwear. Buying a pair of running specific shoes that offer you the right amount of support and cushioning will give your foot that comfort and can make the whole world a difference to your run experience and your enjoyment. It's easy to get 100% into a new sport, especially something like running with its post-exercise endorphins. It can be really addictive, but your body still needs time to repair, adapt and get stronger. Therefore, rest days are vital. Otherwise, you could run the risk of getting injured, maybe not improving, and worst of all, even falling out of the love for the sport. So if you are new to running, it's a good idea to start off by trying to alternate the days you run. So have a run day, then a rest day, and continue like that. And if you don't want to do nothing, on your rest day then maybe try just going for a walk or doing some other kind of more gentle exercise so that your body is still having that time to actually adapt and get stronger from the running stimulus. Do anything the same every day and it's going to get boring but also when it comes to running you're going to see a plateau in your performance and I'm not saying all of us have trails on our doorsteps but you can still mix up your normal run. You could do a direction in the opposite way, you could change the pace or the time that you're running for. There's lots of options when it comes to mixing things up which will not only help with your performance but will also help with boredom and then why not experiment with some new routes. You can get a map out at home and Maybe have a look and find some different parks or even have a little bit of a Strava stalk of your friends and see where they go running. Maybe go for a walk. There's options out there. And on that topic, if you keep an eye out on our YouTube videos, because we've got one coming out very soon on GTN of how to actually plan a running route. And I mentioned changing pace. Well, this can completely change a boring run into something that just flies by. It could be as simple as doing some walk run repeats and maybe run your run parts harder than you would do normally, but then have a walk recovery or find a hill and go up and down that. Maybe it's walking fast up the hill, jogging easy down. Or you could simply put some music in and every time the chorus comes on, you run really hard and then you run really easy on the rest. There's lots of different ways that can just mix it up and keep you loving running. When new to any sport, you're going to make mistakes and after all, that's how we learn. But hopefully, as a result of this video, you'll be making less of those and you'll be on a faster track to enjoying your running experience even more. But if you've still got any questions after this, then make sure you share them. Leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you have enjoyed this video, then hit that thumbs up button and keep an eye out for the rest of our running content. We've got plenty of that on our YouTube channel and also over on our social media channels.